understand that you know the contract really addresses you know liability fees uh, facility as well as any personal property uh, insurance and uh, I think we would have some options there basically it's the responsibility of the county to handle those insurance uh, policies. Uh, it would still be covered under it our is, it is still under our property policy and I think that, <coughs> that you would want it be carried that way, uh, that way you know that the, the coverage is always in, in place and there's not just a, a lapse of, you know. Right. But yeah, and, and I, that was a little, I was a little confused with that, but would that also mean that they would still be responsible for the payment of that? Perfect, or would the school be responsible? Uh, I haven't seen the, uh, we would be because we own the bills, right? I mean, uh, an insurer would not insure it to pay them for the structure as long as we are the owner of it. They would only be able to insure it. Okay, okay. <clears throat> we're going to insure it and pay for the insurance, but and then we're going to lease it for a certain amount. Did Is that the way it was when we were at their buildings? At, like over at the uh, on South Post Road? Okay. Who paid the insurance there? We never insured that building. We, we never covered any insurance except contents and we never paid any utilities there. <clears throat> any other questions? Or, or discussion, comments? Because I, I think this is on the business agenda later tonight too. So I would assume that we silence means we probably can vote for it. And Dr. Power voted away, Mr. Falls. We, we are. Mm -hmm. and, and we appreciate the opportunity to do that. Too. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really do a good thing for our, our taxpayers. We're running out of space at our, our courthouse, mm -hmm. and this is going to allow, allow for that. Well, we're not going to have to expand the courthouse anymore. So. And if the building will deteriorate. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. There's some building that show that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or are they going to carry their insurance on their contents then? Yes. All our insurance will be just for our little structure. Yes, structure, structure, and property. Any other questions? And let me clarify this is for the entire campus there, both the front building and the, the Hunter building, what's called the Hunter building in the back, is for both structures. Some of you are, <coughs> board members may not remember the county has been using part of the Hunter building for storage and storage, uh, both the building and the adjoining lot, and so this would make the whole campus. We have no use of either one of those facilities. What's the approximate acreage over there? It's less than five acres. Just one, one clarification. When we get ready to, to do some building for Three, two years, three years, four years down the road. At that time, did my understand that that's, it was, the county would purchase the property? That's the <coughs> conversation is that at some point when we're ready to do our next building, then that'd be a perfect time for us to talk about. You know, because anything that they pay you right now, you're going to put in your, your capital alley fund anymore. Right. Okay. Good you're not, you're not really, really in a capital funding need right now. Long-term capital project. The lease is it's for seven years, as I interpret it. But it also says unless sooner terminated, it's here in the title. Several uh, avenues for termination, voluntary or otherwise, mm -hmm. on both sides of the fence. Can we have a, a 
Um, Mr. Chair, um, one clarification on paragraph eight, just the insurance piece. Paragraph eight? Yes, sir. And I think you can probably see that there, too. During term of this lease, the county shall be responsible for pay and insure the interrupted maintenance. So it looks to me like the county is solely responsible for insurance. <coughs> That's what it feels like when I read that. Well, but it doesn't. Well, I see what you mean. Those are content problems. So these are content, just content insurance. So our insurance would cover, let's just say there was a fire destroying everything. Our insurance would cover just the bill. The county's insurance would cover the, the in contents. Is that correct? That's that's correct. And, and if I may, yes, sir. Any as as I mean, uh, insurance agent as well. I mean, I, that's what I've done for a for a long time. Uh, the owner of the property would need to pay. It would would need to insure it. It's like whenever. The schools were in the county's property. We had to insure the property because we had the we had the um, it, it was we were we were on the hook if something happened to it. It was it was our bill uh, ultimately. Uh, but we can we can insure the contents of it as well. We also will insure the uh, we'll have liability insurance on there. And what this states in that paragraph there is that we'll list Cleveland County school system as an additional insured. Um, that means that if someone comes out to the property and uh, files a, a liability claim against the county and they file it against the property owner, which is the school system, the, the school system would be covered under our policy uh, for that liability exposure. And those are, those are basic terms, I mean, normal, normal terms on any kind of lease agreement. True, they do, but then if you have a, a dental house, you're going to, and it burns down, the, the, the mentor is not going to get the payment for the structure. We can go on to the same bit to me. I totally understand that piece. So it was just that when you look at that third line there, um, currently in the premises, uh, when it says premises, I'm thinking, you know, the total structure and everything else. So maybe is there a way that we could possibly change the wording or something to kind of designate them and make it a little more clear? We can take that back to the county. That's okay. That wouldn't keep us from voting on it tonight. Right. You should not with instructions to take back to the attorney to clarify that. If that's your, if that's your wish, it may well be a moot point because the way our policy is set up, they they insure our property in the aggregate rather than each separate building. So they're insuring all of the buildings and the property is a percentage of and not necessarily a percentage of kind of a moot point, really. <clears throat> so we, how do they figure then the value of that individual building for payment purposes? They're, they're looking at each year we update the uh, property listing and they're looking at the property listing at $375 million, not necessarily that at this moment in time that building right there is individually worth 1.2 million dollars you know it was placed in the policy at, at some point in time it's been inflation adjusted each year and each new property has been added on so uh they're looking at that 375 million dollars at this point in time because that property's been insured all along not necessarily today what that individual piece turned out to be But that's going to be all those things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be. So I guess it would be in the county's best interest to make sure it's clarified. Okay. I know what you're saying. Anything else? Okay. John, on to the Parks and Recreation Agreement with the City of Shelby. Yes, sir. Just a little background here. Um, the City Park and the staff here at Shelby Middle have been working with partnering for years in regard to the tennis courts and the baseball field slash football practice field and the, the uh, parking that's in that area of campus. Um, so once we relocated uh,
Chip Middle, with Turning Point here, we do not have a competitive athletic program. So basically, since Chip Middle, the new Chip Middle opened, we have not been using um, those facilities in very little. I know uh, currently uh, we are uh, cutting the, the grass on the test court area, but uh, the city park has been handling uh, all the uh, athletic and field maintenance at the uh, baseball field. Um, basically, with, with this agreement, it just uh, gets us uh, an official agreement basically uh, stating that you know, during school hours, the uh, Penn School's TPA has first rights to, to those areas, tennis courts and the uh, baseball football field. After school hours, the city park would have uh, preference in regard to uh, their, their uh, activities. Um, as far as utilities, um, it's my understanding that we, we're currently uh, uh, paying the utilities on the football, which is the water, soccer, and electrical. And then the city already has the electrical the tennis courts, which is the bathrooms and the uh, tennis court block. But this uh, agreement would put all the utilities in, in responsibility to the uh, city park and city of Shell. Um, as far as maintenance, we've been working together uh, but, but again, um, prior to uh, Turning Point taking over this facility, um, we've been involved very well. Uh, city Park has handled that. Um, I know that, uh, to give you an example, prior to this uh, past summer, the uh, City Park replaced the uh, tennis nets in school. So we've had a, a, a very positive partnership here in the past, and, uh, and I know that, you know, the, the baseball, some baseball, fall football, they continue to use that just like they had in the past. Question? I guess I'll just go ahead and move that. That's fine. Did we, uh, do they use any of our other things? Um, like Blanton, Shelby Middle or whatever? Mr. Blanton, all our other uh, facility <coughs> use goes through the individual school, our facility use uh, policy. And I I, I, I'm not sure I'll have to get space, but that goes to the individual school site. If they've got a soccer league that's using the, uh, the practice or a, or a baseball practice or a baseball game, but that doesn't come through our office. That goes to the individual school So Okay. I'm, In other words, like if the park uses uh, Shelby Middle School, then that goes through that school, so yes. that needs to be addressed through right. them instead right. of through us, or this right here. Right. Okay. But I, I just had a phone call that they were using that down there, and I didn't know if that was going to be tying all of that together. And, and that would go through the individual school scheduling of that and, and, and filling out the uh, non-school facility use for okay. Any other questions? Comments? I think, again, that's on the business schedule, too, so I assume that means we will probably <clears throat> okay. Okay. No, but there being no further questions on that, on John to the Davidson Alumni Peace Agreement. Yes, sir. Um, basically, since 2008, that building has basically was, was abandoned in 2008 when we brought our alternative uh, program to uh, South Coast Road. Uh, approximately four years ago, a group of <clears throat> alumni from Davidson School approached us about using that facility to provide some enrichment, actual tutorial program for kids in the community. And at that time, um, we used our facility use agreement for them to, to use that. At that time, um, basically, with that particular agreement, uh, they paid the utilities uh, of that facility during that two or three year period of time uh, when they used that facility. Um, a couple years ago, they wanted to come in and do some renovate. Because remember, once we uh, abandoned that uh, facility, we did not do any work on HVAC. Uh, we, just, we didn't do any more maintenance there since we, we didn't have the purpose as far as the school system. So it came to the point where they wanted to come in and do some fundraisers and, and, and have some funds to do a, uh, some renovations. But we didn't really feel comfortable with, with that arrangement since that building did have some asbestos in it. It was built in the 19, late 40s, 50s, and there was some 
asbestos uh, materials in the ceiling. So uh, we didn't really feel comfortable with an outside group coming in and doing any type of renovation. So at that time, and I think we have a number of board members that remember we chose to abate that building. So we came in and abated it, and uh, it's basically a shell. We have no working edge VAC, the lights are down. It's just a, a shell, about, uh, I think it's about 8,000 square feet of block and grid. Um, they, uh, yeah, that's one I would like uh, to uh, have a lease with some, some guarantee that they can come in and uh, raise some money and come in and make some renovations so that they can continue their mission of providing some community services for the kids in that community. Um, to be honest, this is a uh, this is a, a major undertaking. I mean, that facility is just a shape. Um, I'll say this: uh, in talking with Ms. Toms, she's currently the president of the Alumni Association. They wanted a, a long-term agreement, a long-term lease, 20 plus years. But after uh, communicating with our attorneys, uh, 10 years is, 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 is long as we can get in regards to uh, statutes that the guys. They're good with that. Um, you know, the lease itself, basically, um, you know, any type of renovations, uh, additions, work, they have to be they come through Cleveland County Schools with uh, our approval before we get any type of project. Um, and again, it, this would be very similar in regard to uh, they would uh, take care of the utilities of that facility in, in regard to. Uh, coverage of that facility. And then, again, the, what's unique about this particular uh, lease is that uh, they're going to be working with the local building inspectors uh, as far as uh, the project side of it. And again, we just make it clear with the language that we would be, be very involved in the to be approved uh, before we work with them. Mr. Hill, I you know how much money they have raised for this plan? No, ma'am. Uh, I've met with uh, this group a couple of times the last couple of months, and, and, and they feel like they have some donors that's, uh, that's ready to pull the trigger and, and get some of this work started. But again, one thing that they were concerned with is that the, the amount of the lease, the length of the lease uh, agreements. So, uh, you know, folks want a little more guarantee, but you know, 10 years off. Did we not think about selling it to them and get some money to help us out on our needs? We have uh, talked about that, and you know that is a surplus uh, facility. And following uh, you know proper protocol in regard to selling that, the concern is that once we put it on the market, they may be out of the. That may not be an option for them to purchase it, but that's. That's, that's all the FIA on it. We've got, uh, we've got about eight acres there and, uh, you know, 8,000 square foot uh, block of brick building. I would think the <coughs> land would be more valuable than the building. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, you know, basically a, a fear that they have that if, if we put it on the market and then if someone else purchases it, then, you know, and I'll be honest, uh, you know, there's a couple uh, points of interest with this group. They really want to provide some, some opportunities for kids and then just the sentimental value of that being a, a school that they, uh, it's uh, part of their past. And I, I believe in that, but uh, I know that we need other stuff for our other buildings and stuff like that, that, uh, that we can't carry the buck for someone else when we're needing it for ourselves. Uh, you know, for, for our students right here. Uh, Beth Ware, uh, North Shelby, the auditoriums and stuff like that, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, that we need to raise some money and not be no long term about it. <laughs> And, and I can't share Mr. Platton. We have not had an appraisal done on that piece of property, so I, I do not have Would that not be a good idea to get an appraisal of what it's worth? And 
I don't think anyone would jerk it out of half from under anybody that wants to help children. And I know that we have to look at it in a different direction as far as through the state, uh, you know, of, uh, when we uh, abandoned it. But when it comes to, uh, I just can't believe that, uh, that Donnie Thurman would run over and buy that out from under them for five more thousand dollars when they're wanting to do something for kids at the short. Maybe not Donnie Thurman, but somebody, somebody else. else. <laughs> or somebody else. <laughs> well, I think the issue for them has been, and, and, and I know you weren't here, Mr. Plant, when the, they came to make a presentation some time ago, their thought was they could not afford to buy it. I was at that meeting right. when yeah. they came. And they couldn't afford to buy it and do the renovations. Okay. And so, you know, that's their thinking. It, it's kind of like some of the other partnerships that we have that we don't provide the program but it benefits our students and so that's really the motivation I think from the board from the discussion early on was that okay we, in that lease then and if they do upgrades then they decide they want to leave does those upgrades stay there do they take them with them okay and that's some not, people would might want to take that well I think that they would they would prefer that but that's not an option <laughs> Once you make improvements to the Cleveland National School facility, it becomes a big National And I would guess that their reason for wanting a longer lease is that they're probably a little afraid that they might they would make some improvements to it and then at the end of the lease would say, we're not going to extend it, we're going to take advantage of the improvements that you've made, which but that's not our intention that, that I... Well, but that, that is true, but part but, of their conversation, I've met with the group several times, and he talked with Ms. Thompson as well, part of the concern is they're more likely to get the grants if they're a long-term situation, but you know, as we begin to investigate it, the attorneys tell us that, that that's not a possibility, that 10 years is what we can do. And I know the school systems in the past did more than 10 years in some cases. We're going to talk about one uh, just a minute that was more than 10 years, but that's what the, your attorneys are advising us right now is 10 years is what the statutes say. And um, you know, we tried to assure them that I mean, 10 years is a good term, and, and that would be a nice investment or even a grant at that point. But yeah. that's that's really their issue is re regarding the length of the lease. If they are good with the 10 year understanding that that's, you know, that's, the, that's the best situation that they have. Uh, John, John, I was hoping that uh, Ms. Tomlinson and group would have called to kind of give us some updates on, on where they are. Uh, I know they've been very uh, aggressively, proactively, you know, raising money. They really want to preserve the historical significance of that uh, school as well as, uh, and it may have some historical uh, designation as well of the link of it. But as Dr. Morris alluded to, and, and correctly, that uh, they, they have some significant funding that they could receive based on the long-term arrangement. And so it was somewhat uh, um, stimulated by the fact that uh, they needed a long-term arrangement. I also understand the state discretion about our attorney to them. And I hope they can work something out because I've been in support of them on several occasions when they've had events and they're real committed to bringing uh, assets to that community and providing resources and enrichment for, for the kids in that community. And that was, and again, like I said, we've, we've uh, the attorneys had this for months now, and I've communicated with, uh, with Neil and as well as Ms. Toms, the, the importance of the length of the lease, uh, you know, and the, the, once we get to a point by statute, we, we can only do so much, and I think you understand that now. I mean, they, that, that was the only reason that they were looking to come and, and, and discuss with the board well, as far as the length of the that was, that was I, I believe that Mr. Blanton's point is valid that if there's a revenue stream, that, that is, as a board, we ought to look at that revenue stream. And if it were the Earl Scrub Center or some other good group that was wanting it, I'd, I'd be less inclined than am a group that is aligned perfectly with our mission and our purpose as a school board. Uh, it's, it's not just a charity. Or whatever. This this is a group that is working for education and support of children, and that's in alignment with what our mission is. Um, it, it is a review I, I think it's a valid point, Mr. Mike Races. But in light of the fact that this group aligns perfectly with what our mission is as a school board, 
that I'm, I'm inclined to be a little bit more generous than I would with another group. I would say all of this is predicated on their ability to raise the money to do the If they can't do that, then it's all really kind of a loose point. And I think what you're doing is giving them time to do that. We're going to give them 10 years, in other words, to do that. Well, I don't think they'll pursue it for 10 years if they don't have any success. You know, if they, if they get out there and start raising money and can't raise enough to start, they can't occupy it until they do well, significant work. That, that, they should we put a clause in that uh, that the, they got sort of a time frame to do something instead of giving them a 10 year lease and it's tied up for 10 years and it might not, nothing ever happen. Well, you can terminate this lease. I mean, you've got some termination options in there. I don't think. You know, they're, they're going to go on for 10 years, and they're not going to start really investing money until they've got enough to do something. But building inspectors going to keep them out of this building for a while. Right. And I mean, they're not using them. They right. can't use them. Well, they can't raise money until they get this agreement in the first place. Right. Right. I think we give them a chance. I mean, when you, like Roger said, we have an opportunity here to really, you know, throw, throw a great group an opportunity here. I mean, they're doing a lot of good work. I'm sure we could. We possibly could get some dollars on it, you know, but we could possibly get some people who are helping kids after school who are giving them a safe environment. There's no telling how much that's going to be worth. So, um, so I think, I mean, if it's about the children, I, I like what I see right now. I guess the ball's in their court. And I'll say it is, it is a very ambitious part. Yeah. I mean, it really is. But they've also been very patient, too, with us right. because this, we've been in discussion with them for for many years now, and um, so they've, they've, they've been patient trying to, to do everything the right way. I say, everybody okay? Good. Okay. Next item is partnership for children lease agreement. Um, yeah, just recently, uh, the partnership did uh, approach us to see the possibilities of relocating to the business center through the mountain. Uh, a little history here, the, uh, the partnership has been using the Moore House, and, and, and that's the, the house here that's on the campus here at uh, Central Services. It's my understanding that that lease began back in, in 2000, and, and um, I'm not aware of the, if they had any association with the Shelby City uh, schools prior to that, but I know that they've been using the house. More house since 2000. And basically, the partnership and um, all our pre K funds flow through the partnership. And they work closely with Ms. Bean and her staff in regard to the pre K. Uh, you may be able to talk more uh, in regard to that. But uh, you know, this, is, this is a, a partner that uh, really works with our artistic staff. Um, and again, they have asked to, to use the uh, top floor at the business center. Approximately 12,000 square feet, um, and we looked at that in regard to um, trying to, to, to match that with the uh, building control systems, and, and basically there's three thermostats that controls that area, so it's pretty easy to, to sort of separate that. Because one thing that, that we would uh, definitely uh, be involved here is them paying for their portion of utilities. Currently, we have. Uh, Maintenance and then some um, the uh, I don't know, teacher center um, groups there. So we still have a presence there, uh, but currently we have certain areas of that building that are shut down. But this would again open up the top floor. Um, what we our conversations with Ms. Taylor is that we would actually um, charge them a per square foot, a dollar per square foot. Uh, some Preliminary numbers, it looks like around $1,100 a month, seven, eight cents per square foot. Um, they would be responsible for their custodial duties and custodial supplies from the top floor. Um, I will want to note that uh, I did notice this today on page five, truck loose. Um, very tall. Uh, Tenant shall set up its own account for internet and local long distance telephone service. Um, basically, they will be able to use our internet. And talking to Dr. Lutz, we have a 
portal that comes in and it's a monthly charge whether they're there or not. So their their being there will not have any impact on that. But they will handle uh, uh, charges in regards to their level of long distance. Um, did do a little something different in regard to the insurance on this particular list. Currently, they have a the general uh, liability uh, that we require, and then they have additional liability that's required by pre-cap. It's, it's, it's an umbrella even larger, and then they're paying um, property insurance along with their personal property over here at the Morehouse. So basically, they're handling all the insurance for that facility. And I basically just took that and put it in this lease, and we will work that out. Uh, I've spoken to David, and we may be able to have them to reimburse us their part of the you know, high property uh, insurance. Again, we'll work that out. But uh, Ms. Taylor's aware of that. And basically, what we try to do is take you know, the uh, the lease that they have now and just try to match it up with, with this new lease, even though it's, it's a, a different day, uh, but as far as the, the fees and, and the charges that they've been associated with that program, it will be very similar to the new American business. Uh, they are tickled with the opportunity to talk about them. I will share that. And they have uh, potential for some additional brand funding uh, proper with them and uh, they have potential for increased staff is kind of what has spurred this move. I think our lease, the Shelby City lease from 2000 expired in April of 14. And so that's where this kind of got rolling. That lease actually expired two months ago for this house. And so that's why we're here today, either renewing that lease or going to, to the business center or whatever other wishes you have. Comments, questions? Mr. Gilbert, you commented on that. So they are or they aren't setting up their own accounts? Now, uh, the, the internet will, 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 will be, they'll hook up to, and, and use our internet service. But as far as their phone charges, local and long distance, they will set that will be separate from the school. So they'll be on our, our network? They'll be on our network only for internet. And so they will not you know, use our Gmail or our server. Okay, and they won't expect us to take care of their technology or will they? The only thing we will be accountable for is our network wiring and the active drops. Uh, there are at least two active drops in each office and there are, uh, I believe, four access points that we've installed. So they'll call their own. When they have they, they, they 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 a gentleman that is their technology person on staff. Now, one thing that, that I did recommend to our attorney is that even when we have maintenance issues, um, I would rather our folks be on campus preparing our facility and rather than having somebody outside the country. If the light house goes out on the third floor, we'll do a maintenance request and our guys will handle it. I, I would feel more comfortable with that since we're, I mean, we have a presence in this business. But do we charge them for that? Um, I'm just asking. No, sir. Uh, we do not have any, any, any language in regard to a uh, fee and maintenance fee or anything like that. Are we going to have a charge on these internet services that we're giving them? We have a hundred meg pipe that runs to that facility and we pay $225 a month for the old business center and that's whether there's one program or five programs. Okay, as far as, handle well we have to pay it regardless of whether they're there or not. We're going to get the funds back from them. Well currently uh, you know, we're paying that name with uh, the buyer staff that's occupying that facility. That charge is not going to go away. And as far as internet access, we're on the state backbone, so we don't pay for internet access anyway. We get that free from the state. 
this might not have nothing to do with it has something to do with that building. The energy man, he's on one of those floors there. Could he not move in this building here and let's, let's say that cost from having that other, I know the maintenance group is in the basement, that's total separate. But what I've seen down there is just the energy man basically on this other floor. Uh, have we not got an office that he can move in here and, and shut down some costs that we have there? And I'm trying to find some money. We did have, and that was the original uh, plan uh, when, when we uh, uh, looked to move here. But, uh, we still have the parent center as part of our Title I program in, in the uh, western, excuse me, the eastern end of our county. And again, we have a presence there, and we just felt like it would be good to have a Another one of our employees there. Well, how many rooms are they taking now? Uh, four. 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 When you walk in, when you walk in that front door, take a right. They occupy that whole left side. Uh, we got. Uh, we ain't got no racing stuff here. Well, they're no. there because they're helping that part that of the is. county, so they're making it. Well, that's just off the big building is what I'm saying. We're keeping power and electricity on the water. And a lot of cost in utilities. Uh, we have been able to, like I said, we have been able to uh, use our building control systems to shut down. I know the top floor was shut down. And then the left side, when you walk in, we a separate wing unit. So uh, we've been able to do that. Uh, uh, the, uh, the parent center is very similar to Okay, by leasing that top floor then, does that mean that we might probably most likely going to have to open up the left side then of that building? No, we would not. Um, with, with this current, when they first um, we started talking about this uh, partnership, this lease, they preferred the left side on the main floor and then part of the third floor. Then we would have had to. So now we've, we've tried to the best manage locations based on the, you know, the building control. From my understanding, they're going to vacate this facility yeah. here on this campus. Yeah. We approve this lease. So do we have plans for that? Um, <laughs> no. Uh, okay. you know, yeah, it has, a, it has a historical designation also that. Limits what you can do. So it does have a long term to preserve the historical thing. I'm not aware of that history, uh, Dr. Andrews. I thought it had that yeah. classification. What was it? Historic designation? Yeah. I thought it had historical. The Morehouse? Yeah, I thought so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So that's lost to us. The more house belongs. So they're going to move out of this and we're going to go move them somewhere else. I they'll, thought they'll, they'll, they'll move themselves, but they will relocate. to another facility. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Pretty close, and uh, I think I thought that was part of the deal years ago that 14 year lease. But I could be wrong, I appreciate if you just ask it to see if well, somebody's bound to know, or they're bound to be some records somewhere. So that, that, that may limit whatever we might do with it. I think T. Alexander has some information. I'm sure he does. I take it though everybody is in agreement. Uh, you yeah, yeah, well, I just 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 one other comment. I, I'm certainly supportive um, of the uh, you know moving, relocating, uh, fellowship, uh, partnership with children. I look at it from the standpoint of value add. You know, I know we look at costs and trying to cut costs and all of that, but you know, I look at the intrinsic investment and education value of, of giving more opportunity to serve more students. I mean, right now, we're not addressing all the needs of free education students as it is. And hopefully that will give them an opportunity <coughs> to, uh, 
to you know expand and reach in their services. And, and so I think that you have benefits sometimes, you know, we need to call it, but it's just has so much significant the relationship that we have with them, the partnership, um, the critical delivery of educational services that they provide makes it a great partnership. And I certainly would be very supportive of making sure that we can help them continue to deliver services what if to that population. Stay. They're excited about this opportunity to expand their square footage because they do feel confined and limited. Mr. Mayor, I also would help with a lot of that building in Kings Mountain. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like somebody occupying behind the space. And that building really runs down very quickly and makes that community look forward to when you don't take care of facilities like that. And, and, and we hear about that in yeah. Kings Mountain. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? With People don't like seeing the most significant building, so that, that brings a lot back to that particular area. Well, and I'll share this. Uh, I had the opportunity to be in the Morehouse, and if you hadn't, it's nice. They have, they have done some nice renovations. This, this, this facility is nice. And I know uh, Ms. Taylor had the opportunity to film the campus of the business center, and she has plans now of uh, that space to upgrade it. And again, part of our lease is that before we make any kind of our approval and again that will be you know, they will fund you know, fund those improvements so i can promise you the third floor will get some upgrades i think the good thing for the school system as a whole is you're going to have i don't think you're going to have i don't know what to call it revenue mr lee but you're going to have some help from the utilities on that third floor from here and then that leaves the morehouse as a potential site for you to consider in the future uh, do you want to are there programs you need to look at there? Or you can certainly rent that for um, certain businesses. So it, it could be that could be a revenue stream for you uh, as a school district down the road, insurance office or uh, whatever it might be. It is, in, it is in the condition that you could do that, rent it for office space here in uptown proximity. I think you would have a market for that. Mr. Robert, Mr. Robert's been you know, they work with the, the lease part of the business, the, the physical, you know, the structural part of the value. Uh, Ms. Taylor and I have had conversations about the, the, their level of support with, with our pre-K programs and, and some things that they would like to do that will impact instructionally our, our pre-K programs, what we're getting in return um, from there. And so, uh, Mr. Garber and I have been working on both on is in the least the building part, but instructionally from some things we need for her and we'd like to see the uh, partnership continue to do on the project. But we will be responsible for the maintenance. Yeah, I understand that right. I, I have requested that uh, instead of outside groups coming in and, and doing uh, repair work, maintenance work, that we do uh, maintenance requests just like we do any of our other facilities. It's just like now. Uh, partnership there, if there's a uh, house that goes out, our maintenance employees make those credits. And except for the remodeling now. We oh, oh yeah. They, 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 I'm talking about you know, uh, you're, you're talking about the smoke getting stopped up right. or, or uh, leaking pipe or somebody that knows that facility. Right. That's right. But now any improvements or upgrades. That's that their responsibility. Exactly. After we our have approval. Yes. Correct. Well, I'm glad to hear that. They maintain this over here. It's not real well because I think I have, I have many fond memories of boys. My aunt Sarah who lived there the last till until she died, and I was in high school part of that time and spent many hours over there enjoying her company and and, and the house. Uh, so I'm happy to see that, and I hope that it could provide some use. You know, to us. If not, it's a historical designation. Of doing other things. What is the plan for that? Uh, we do not have we don't have we don't have formal plans just now. Okay, anything else on that? <coughs> All right, I'll put that John on to the long range facility at North Shelby School. Yes sir. Um, just wanted to come back to the table in regard I know uh, 
the last meeting, uh, Rod Collin came in and presented some information in regard to uh, sort of comparing uh, the new facility with uh, renovation to the current facility. Just, uh, you know, I guess, just asking you know, what are you looking from our office in regard to moving forward with uh, our priority in our phase one. I looked uh, after Roger uh, Holland prepared the, uh, the drawings he did for the uh, possible renovation uh, of North Shelby. I looked at that a little bit. Could you run that up on the chart? That's the last, last uh, drawing, uh, last page of that. Uh, he was basically talking about building a five, spending $5 million on building that building on the left, that large uh, gray uh, shaded area, would be five million. Spending three million building those uh, basically walkways that go out across the campus, hooking those three old buildings together, and the uh, two above there, and then the uh, which would be the gym and the uh, riding area. Uh, but I got to look at that. If you actually, instead of building just that building on the uh, gray area, if you went out into this parking lot area to the, left, to the left, and you added a big building out there, I'm going to walk up there. Here you go. Sure. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Right. If you actually went out there, and in this area, you built an addition, made the addition bigger. They're doing this addition for five million. They're going to spend three million on these walkways, and then two million to renovate. But if you actually built this as part of the, uh, you did away with this, and you just simply replace this old building and this and this, you can just simply do that right out here where the parking lot is. You've got a whole new building, with the exception of the gym. And this building, the next to building, which is here, and you can just sit the neck. This could become the front of the building. You would all your construction work would be over on one side, away from the kids. Uh, you would be uh, you'd have to move those two uh, units right there, somewhere over here. But we've got twenty some acres out here. There's a lot of dirt out there, and I know the grading is not real easy. But uh, you can move an awful lot of dirt with a, with a big earth mover and pack it. And uh, you could say, he's talking about just replacing the gym in the new building would be, I think, $1.2 million. 300000 to replace the, the uh, 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 riding area. Uh, I'm not sure what, how much of say you can save this, this part of the building. That is a newish building. But certainly, uh, just looking at this, we're probably we're looking at cutting the cost a million and a half to a million bucks, which would be a pretty substantial saving rather than spending uh, spending some ten ten million instead of spending ten million, spend eight and a half. And I'm not an architect; I don't know all the details of that. But I'm just saying I think we need to look more at is there a way we can build a brand new building on this campus off to the side. Where we're not interfering with what's going on in the classroom, we could actually face the building this way. And then after we're through construction, you tear down the old park and you build a parking lot out here, and it'd be, uh, and make it uh, a nice entrance to the building. Uh, but it's simply adding on your new property, your new addition back to the back here. Just a thought. But uh, that way, we, if we can save that million-dollar building, that's pretty. Simple. We save that three hundred thousand. We could save the uh, playground uh, fifty thousand, and plus the fact we're saving and having to go out and buy a new property. Uh, and the time you buy a new property, grade it off, and make your water and sewer connections and all that, you know, we can be spending three quarters to a million, to a million dollars buying property. So uh, the savings might be substantial for us to think about. So I just would just like for us to be sure to consider maybe looking at this area a little more rather than just uh, 
be gung ho on going out and buying a new site and building a whole new school. Part of that development, just as point of information, that building right there is the vocational building, is it not? Yes. Yeah, I think I'm right on that campus. That's our, that building is relatively new, I would say, just before I came, but I would think it was probably more than 12 or 15 years old at the most. That building is relatively new. These two buildings. That's the this building is, is certainly going to correct that problem that building. That's the challenge is that front building is to renovate that in any meaningful way because of the just because of the structure itself, but also the fact that you can't close this for a year. And we don't have an opportunity to relocate the children. Can you, can you go to that last page where you have the, the, the top of the view? Or is it not the same? Yeah, the yeah, last page. Come on. Yeah. I included that. Uh, we did not give that to you at the last meeting, just to show you the property lines. There. So, look, is that all that area within that within that border? Yes. Okay. Because that gives credibility to what Jerry is saying. Possibly. Again, I'm not an architect either, so I'm not sure. But it seems like that's a lot of uh, acreage or area that could be. But what what Jerry mentioned just now was only utilizing that part over there to to the right to the right. No, the other, the other way. Right, the, right. Yeah, now up. Uh, up. Uh, right. Uh, uh, that's the right. Keep going <laughs> to your right. Go on over toward the apartments. That's the usual. That's the old building, right? Right. There. right. Well, right. Jerry go was more. saying going a little more. He said put it right here. Huh. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. That that's right. where he put it. Yeah. That's where he said put it right there. Yeah. yeah. There. That's where he's putting it. Yeah. There's the yeah. yeah. middle. Yeah. There's the outside yeah. middle. Not where he's driving. Yeah, that's not the way. Yeah. That's the way it is. That's the way he said. On your drawing, right there, where the parking lot is. Yeah, that parking lot. He's showing a new parking lot. That's a new parking lot that they would put in. That parking lot doesn't exist right now. Yeah, I know, but he was saying. Where, right. where the new, where they're proposing the new structure, just, just keep going out to the left, making it a bigger Hold on new second. structure. There's your riding area. Yeah. All right, let's let's go back to the other There's yeah. There's your riding area. So yeah, no. So it's turning. It's turning. So he's talking about putting that building. In. There's your no. greenhouse. Right, there's your greenhouse. Yeah. That's right there. Where is on that? Where is the proposed new building? Isn't it off to the right? Right there. Right there. Okay. Then I correct Mr. Yarbrough. Yeah, that is correct. And I would note that we have an additional school classroom unit here. And also, they supported this, 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 this tree line. We got a big fall off. You have a draw in here, don't you? You have a draw right there. Yeah, and this is like that. Yeah. How many acres total was all of that property? 24. 24. And if you look at right there, the garden. The riding room is right there. Yeah. That's the best picture of the riding room. Yeah. 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 That's the double wide down yonder, low in the greenhouse, and right there, right there, the greenhouse. Okay. This doesn't include the second monitor. Okay. All the picture. That's the older building. But basically, if you move the two monitors and do away with the greenhouse, you can go out and do all that construction down on one side of the campus and not bother the rest of the campus. Right. You would may, you may have to do some grading off, get some dirt off on uh, some of that low area and bring it in, pile in to make the building on one story building. But moving dirt is fairly cheap if you're not putting on trucks and haul it. And it, actually, if you graded a bunch of that, you might actually make that land more usable for the kids. You might be able to make them accessible, wheelchair accessible, nature walk or something down through there. If you, once you've got the dozers down there working, that's not uh, it's as equal. Is, all that, is that all timber up in there? Yeah, you had to clear cut all that. Yeah. You stuff it. It's, it's a steep uh, slope on both sides. Yeah, there, there's some, uh, they probably some uh, swamp uh, uh, 
uh, well, what am I going to say? He doesn't play in back there. <laughs> uh, back there on the tail end of that, but uh, they still good bit of property there. I'm just saying it might be worth looking at. I don't know. I mean, but, I would feel very comfortable in, in, in going back and, and getting some, some thoughts in regard to that, that philosophy and even talk to some graders to see what we're looking at as far as, you know, Tonight's point purpose is, is to have this discussion. If you want us to go back, you want these folks to go back and look at more options. Uh, if you want to go look for land, they they need some direction. Mr. Yarbrough needs some direction so he can. Well, we were okay on a piece of land for sale and because uh, there's a fella going to buy it and he backed out. He says, how about letting the school look at it first? And that's out on one acre. Uh, Cleveland location. You might be aware of that. Uh, Mr. Goforth mentioned that at the uh, North Shelby graduation the other day, that he was approached about buying it and he backed down just to see if the school would, might be interested, that he wouldn't want to interfere, uh, with, uh, especially by being North Shelby. We've had quite a few property owners that have contacted us, and that's typical when y'all start talking about some people think that. But that's the time to talk to us. So we've had several properties that have been mentioned. Uh, like Mr. Paul said, they moved a lot of dirt down here at Shelby Middle School. It ain't no problem moving dirt. It costs money to move dirt, though. Well, they spin it down there. I think it'd be worth so looking, I think looking at. Um, but John, what were the, um, when, the, when that committee met, I mean, what they came out and said was relocate. They didn't say rebuild. I mean, what, what were, it would have been nice if, if they had said relocate and or rebuild. I mean, that, that would give us a little bit more. Well, their recommendation was to relocate that facility because of the challenges that, that will be here in regard to uh, making uh, necessary renovations here. I mean, that was, but again, if we did not have contractors Great contractors. Uh, would it be helpful for this board at this point? Or do the point where we'd like to schedule a time for the board to meet on this property, to walk some of it, to look at it? I mean, if that's if that's where you are, then that's what needs to be done next. I mean, again, there's no there's no timeline. We haven't set the timeline for this. The point is, if you're going to go somewhere else, you already need to know that so you can start working on it. If you're not going to go somewhere else, then you then spend time, invest time in working on this life. But that's something you all have to do. We a lot of that to last time. I mean, it's up to you all what you want to do. Well, to me, I, I have a problem. I mean, I, I, I feel for the disadvantaged students. I think we ought to do everything we can to accommodate their basic needs and go further if possible. However, we have to face what's happening at the legislature right now. We're under fire economically, financially. We're already going to dip down more into our fund balance. And I think we owe it to our mission, which is to, despite the strategic plan, putting relocation there, I think there was no concern for financing it, for money there. Therefore, I, I think for 150 or 160 kids, it, it, it's pretty expensive to spend 10, 11, 12 million dollars. So if there's any, I think, we need to be physically responsible. I guess I read one time where Winston Churchill said, uh, uh, when you're young folks, you vote with your heart. When you're older like me, you vote with your mind. <laughs> so maybe I'm just too much Scrooge, I guess. But I, I really think we owe it to look at this and maybe look at other things, you know, maybe Maybe it's possible we have schools that are in buildings that might be appropriate for cheaper renovation. 
where we're having decreasing enrollment there that we put those kids in other adjacent schools in the same area general general area i mean i, I know that's thinking way out of the box but i think we're almost forced to do that now since money's not as prevalently available as it may have been in earlier years so i i, I just i think it's a good idea to walk over to get a feel for it to look at it, you know to look at the other options too you know. Jerry's presented one, but there may be more, many uh, you know, out there. So that's my feeling. I better show you. Well, one thing I'll say is we don't, we don't have a long-range building plan. We've got a strategic plan, which was supposed to be a five-year plan. Uh, a long-range plan looks at everything. And you mentioned like a, a, another school. We've got a, a Graham school that's sitting over with that's 58 years old. Teasing my wife because she went there when she was a kid. Uh, but it's an old building and it hadn't really had much done to it. But it's on one level, it's a good size. That might be a place that we would want to renovate and maybe move, build a building somewhere else for a program or some of those kids or add on somewhere else. We've not really looked at, you know, we need to look at the auditoriums at Burns and Crest. One of my concerns is if this board doesn't do something, the kids that are entering the middle school right now, uh, Burns and Crest, will graduate and never have an auditorium. It's been, those buildings have been there for years, or close to 40 years, and they still don't have an auditorium. And they won't have one until we come up with the money. We may need to look at the overall picture of what we need to build in this county, and by looking at a bond issue, perhaps. We've talked about doing an intermediate school for the county, but we don't have any, there's nothing to mention about money or what we take. We've got other schools like Bethware and Grover. Uh, we've got some athletic issues. Some of our bathrooms are disgraced at, the, at some of the ball fields. Uh, we need to, there's a lot of needs. So we've really not sat down and looked at all of those needs as a package and looked at what can we get done and how much money is it going to take. And it may take a bond issue. And I think it, you know, it may or may not pass if we ask for one. But I guarantee you, if we don't ask for one, we won't get one. And if we really want, if the people of Cleveland County really want to see good school facilities, probably a bond issue is going to be necessary either now or in a couple, uh, in a few years down the road. And we so, should have talked about that before we extend all of this right here to a certain degree. But, you know, we've got, you know, we've got, we, a long range plan would be, I think, an our great interest. And we're talking four months, six months, we could come up with a long range plan for what are our school needs for the next. 10, 15 years. Are we going to be 20 years from now? Are we still going to have kids that live almost in Grover driving by Shelby High School and going to Grace? Are we ever going to address that? No, we don't have to now. We don't have to in five years or 10 years, but in 25 years, is that still going to be happening? It is unless this board does something to change that. And, uh, you know, that's, that's long range, but as a board, we need to be thinking long range, not just let's fix this one problem. And it is a problem in North Shelby, we do need to fix it. But it ought to be part of a bigger picture, at least I'd like to see it be part of a bigger picture. Mr. Chair, um, I agree with a lot that you're saying. And um, I do think we need to fix this one problem. Like, I do think, you know, it's important to do it now. Um, it's at the top of the list on our plan. Um, and I mean, it's been there. And I think now we have the opportunity to do something. Now I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Dr. Hamrick, that we need to do it so We need to do it the right way. Um, there are options we need to look at. Um, when it comes to the architect, I'm sure, I, was this the lowest bid that we got? Have we looked at all that kind of thing? You know, the, 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 this was just to kind of give us I got you. Something. And typically on these, we'll do uh, a square footage estimate. We'll be what kind it's just an estimate. That's what I got you. So it could be more, it could be less. And that could be a possibility. Now, that's what I'm interested in, getting the ball rolling, getting the process rolling, and, and doing it the best for those kids. I mean, anybody who's been in that building, I think all of us agree that they need something over there. And I think we need to get the ball rolling. Um, you talked about some issues with driving past schools. I don't even want to tackle that stuff right now. You talked about a hornet's nest. But, um, but as far as this goes, I think this is very important at this time. Um, and I think we need to focus on it. So. And for back to the point about long range facilities, we didn't do anything in this, 
this current business plan, but if you go back to the prior one, you really do have a structure for a long-range facility plan that mentions, that accounts for all the things that you mentioned. But it was designed to have the notion of some local funding, a state bond referendum, and a local bond referendum. That was before the bottom dropped out. Uh, I passed bond referendums, been, been down that road. It would be a challenge. And you're talking, you know, you're talking in excess of 100, and, uh, excuse me, you're talking in excess of 60 plus billion dollars, I think, to do kind of the basic projects you talked about right now. I mean, you're talking about a big amount of money. That's something the school district's going to have to, to tackle. But you really do have those projects outlined for you in at least what those projects were from the plan two times ago. If you want to go back and look at it, it's a starting point. I think it's there for you. We just didn't bring it forward because it seems kind of a good point when, you, when we don't really have a funding stream uh, to do those additional projects. You're going to have to do these, uh, these projects rather than a bunch of building at one time. I've done both. And uh, I wouldn't. I would, yeah, well, one or the other on the bottom of that. Sure, I, I'd like to suggest that, that we do go out to the property at, at some time and, and walk over it and, and uh, see what's out there. And, and I think Jerry has raised some interesting ideas that I'd like to see Mr. Holland look at. You know, it's, a, it's an interesting idea of, of how we can do that and, and you know, maybe get a new school and not have to go somewhere else. But that's, it's a, it's, it's worth the discussion. Worth, as I said, he's not an architect, and I'm not either. So we need to get somebody that is an architect to give us a professional opinion on that. Well, and I, I know moving forward, if the board wants us to, and if John and I can do that, um, it would be good. I know it's going to be warm, it's going to be hot. Uh, but if we did it over the summer, we would not be people on the campus. The students aren't there. It would be easy for us to walk through that. Everybody get a little orientation of making sure they know exactly what, what their options are. John and I would probably need a little time to plan, but, but maybe, you know, uh, sometime closer to the end of the summer, we get plans and there's some time over there to, to walk that campus and you know, get early in the morning or, or later. Great early morning, 6 a.m. Great. In the morning? Yeah. Come on. That would be able to walk through that and make sure that, <laughs> and we got, you know, obviously we need some time to be able to, to get some information to do the We did learn our lesson over here. Mm -hmm. We like to eat whenever we want but that's what the board wants us to do. We will definitely arrange that, you know, through the summer uh, and look about at the end of the summer, bringing in, you know, some groups and, and having some walk through and having some discussions about, you know, you know we can explore some of those different options. I, I would also, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's a great idea for us to go on that property. But I'd also, during that period of time, I'd like for you to go out and look and see if there's other property out in the county, just in case that plan A does not work out. And Mr. Yeah. Holland or whoever's looking at it says, that sounds good, but it won't work. You know, we're going to run into these issues and if the ground won't hold it or whatever, whatever the, if there is issues, they might not be. And here's plan B, and let's go look at that property and we'll see the difference and see the logistics of how we can make that work. I think the timetable, I'd like to see it go on. I'd like to, I, mean, I think this is a project that it needs to happen, and uh, that is on our plan. And uh, we need to be careful with our spending. I want to make sure that we do that. But I think I think we're having a need for more than just 150 kids. I think it's 150 kids year after year after year after year, which which is a whole lot of kids. And I think that we've do the facility in the right way to serve the county and these kids and the students and the staff for a long time. Well, and I've and I've got a list of things, some thoughts here. So if we get permission, you know, people about John and I will, you know, a little flexibility not with just option A and B, but maybe even, you know, C -D -D. we will do me to come in here and say here's some different different options that we may have uh, to, to be able to do that. And we may come with that discussion and then need to, you know, look at some other things. But at least we'll have a, a wider scope of the, uh, Well, and I think that, that it's also given us a chance. I mean, it's not like, like somebody said maybe a couple times, we're not on a tight time frame, but we're at least making steps. Um, because I know with the Shelby Middle School properties, it took a while for y'all to go around and look. And then some of those pieces of property might would have 
been really good for the middle school, but I believe it was Dr. Bulls that said they must have had gold buried underneath because the, the price was just way too high for us. And, I, and you're going to run into that too. Um, so, yeah, and then we may end up coming back around to, to, to the property we already own. So I think it's. it's you good. might be surprised what somebody might do and, for North Shelby School that would do for, the, for another, for, yeah. but they will do for North Shelby. Because yeah. I've done heard that talk out there. And that's the reason I brought up piece I brought up, uh, which I have no idea. I, I have never talked to nobody. All I know, he just made that statement at the graduation that uh, that they came to him wanting to sell it. I'll lend to somebody. All that's all he said. I'll lend to somebody. And uh, he says, I'd like to see, hold off to see what the school system is planning on doing about North Shelf if they consider relocating. It's got to be somewhere in a central location to work for the whole county for that school. And, you know, that is a central location somewhere in that neighborhood from 18 to 180 to, to the courthouse or whatever. Okay, I think it's been clarified enough for it, John. Well, I just had one question. Um, I will share that in the uh, Shelby Middle Search, we identified 15 properties that we spent some time look at and we still have that list. But am I hearing you say that even talk to plans available in a ballpark figure? Uh, we want to, to go that far or just if the plans available? I'd like to hear a ballpark figure. That was, I think that was the end of the decision making. Uh, and, and slow down the process. I know we're not on the timetable, but I also realize that if we drag our feet on this, then we're sending the message to the other projects behind it that their project also is going to be Extending out longer too, so I want this to be do a good job, and you know, kind of, I, you know, I don't want to hold the auditorium project to be able to do that for for the others, but at the same time, so I, I don't want to do too much slow <laughs> slow motion, but I don't want to get too fast to it. Okay. Thank you all. Let's see the next thing. I believe. Uh, <coughs> See, the next thing is the virtual academy, right? Yes, sir. Dr. Ware and I will try to be very brief to get to a little bit back on, uh, on, on the time. I, I want to, before I turn it over to Dr. Ware, I want to mention a couple of successes and things from an instructional update before we talk specifically about the virtual academy. Uh, you know, this is an exciting time of year. Uh, we had seven graduations over the last two weeks. Uh, uh, almost 1,100 students graduated from Lincoln County Schools, and that's a phenomenal Thing. It's great. I, I've heard from circumstance. I've shaken, shaken uh, enough hands uh, to uh, at the ice down uh, Saturday night. But uh, uh, it's it's a good time. You know, that's what we're here about. When you see students that you know have worked hard, that our staff has worked with, we put a lot of time and energy and effort with. If you see them walk across the stage and get a diploma, that's a rewarding experience. So I appreciate that. Uh, our schools and our staff have worked hard. That's good. Along that line. We have almost, we have over nine million dollars of scholarships that have been awarded to our students this this year, and that's that's exciting. Um, that's why we're in this business to, to see student success, and that, that's positive. Uh, third thing, test scores have are, are come back, uh, and I can tell you, don't have any test scores for you. We'll give you an instructional update and a score update at some point. Uh, our principals are happy that our scores are increasing. A lot of green. Um, Dr. Ware came and said, come here, come here, I'm going to show you this, show you this, and the whole screen was green, which is green, you know, good. good. We got those scores coming up, and I have growth reports or anything like that yet for you, but, but I know our, our scores are improving as we've gone. Uh, one example of that is the, the words that you heard me talk about before to you in front of you, read to achieve. Um, and, and I'll tell you that, that our third grade teachers, man, I'll tell you what, they did a great job. Uh, we were anticipating, hopefully, being less than we were hoping they could get under 400, to be honest with you. We, because we looked at last year's data, where we would be, we knew we'd get better, but I'm proud of the report. We have under 200 students for each of you, and that's fantastic. Our, our teachers and our students did a phenomenal job. Um, of that, remember, we asked for that exception. And we said, you know, we, we had that local option. And we said, we, we don't know how many kids that'll help, but we figured that'll help. I mean, I was kind of afraid that would help a ton, it, it, you know, I'm proud to say that we didn't need that in most of our cases. It only helped about 35 students in our district, which means what happens is those students pass their portfolio passages 
or they passed the EOG, they did it and, and they really were successful. So I feel very, very good um, about, uh, about what our schools have done with, you know, with all of our testing. Um, but, but really, that's our great big achievement. So I know um, if you got any burning questions tonight, I'll try to answer those, get you some more data later on and even through email. But I just kind of want to give you some, some four success stories there. Only 200 will be going to less than 200 will be going to the summer camp. Less than 200 are eligible, and there may be some of those that are some exemptions and some things that are there, but we have under 200. So we we've had those enclosed sites and consolidate some sites that uh, that we thought we were going to need, but now we, we're not needing. So uh, we, those are good problems to have when you may not need as many teachers as you thought you need, or we don't need as many buses as we thought we need. But that's um, that's a good problem to have. We anticipate the governor signing some legislation that may impact a little bit to reach to achieve in the next day or two. So we're moving forward with our plans, and then if that legislation changes, we can change our plans, make them on the back end a little bit. But at this time, we're we're uh, we're not going to uh, change our start date. We're going to keep that moving forward. Uh, with that. But our teachers and our administrators and our school folks have really worked hard. I just want to take my big break. Right. 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 We got three things we're really excited about starting. Uh, and Dr. Ware is going to talk just a little bit about each of them: uh, the virtual academy, um, our leadership academy, and uh, the symposium. The symposium is probably the one that's in the, the most uh, detailed uh, or finished shape right now. That's going to happen on August 5th. But we want to kind of get you in the loop on the virtual academy and the leadership academy as we plan that. So if you hear that, you know what's going on. Thank you for the opportunity to share um, our. Cleveland Virtual Academy is called Summit, and we will begin in August with 14 courses. Um, and you have, I'll read to you, you have copies of um, the information about the Academy, but we currently have, this year alone, over 400 students, uh, 400 enrollments in North Carolina Virtual Public High School courses. And so having our own Virtual Academy gives us the opportunity to hire our own teachers teach our kids and that will give us a great deal of, uh, I believe, of leverage and some better supporting students who take those courses. Uh, so we're excited about that. It will also um, give great flexibility for our high school kids who are interested in more college level experiences. Uh, student, we often uh, use NCBPHS when a student wants to stay in the arts program but the course they need to graduate is offered during the time that band or course is offered. Um, this will allow us to use our own teachers to teach those courses to allow for that flexibility. And for our juniors and seniors, it will allow perhaps a junior or senior who's interested in our new industrial management credential at the community college to take what high school is left virtually so that they can be on the community college campus uh, for the instruction today. So the real reason we're interested in the primary reason is flexibility for our students. Um, so we're really excited about this. Um, we have a design team right now working to develop 14 courses. Um, in August you have those listed um, in one of the handouts on board docs. Um, another reason this is exciting is we have a couple of schools, TPA and the early college, um, who do not have, because of their size, do not have staffing to offer Spanish. Uh, currently, um, early college students can only take Spanish through the um, college, and some of them are simply not ready for that. So this will allow us to offer Spanish program for kids who can't take college Spanish at the early college using our own teachers, which will allow for even some face-to-face -face support if needed for them to be successful, but also a TPA. Occasionally we'll have students that they're college bound there. They have to have foreign language to get into our university system. So we're really excited about that. Um, if you have any questions at all, I'll be glad to answer those questions. Uh, we hope you like our logo. Um, we think it sends the right message. And we're using um, uh, best practice in online learning. Uh, I have a very talented design team. We have experience not only as an online student, but also they have experience with online teaching. We're using the Haiku Learning Management System. We tried out several, including Blackboard, which you may be familiar with. That's what our community college uses. And Haiku is just exceptional, very user-friendly, and allows us a lot more flexibility in course development. Um, so 
we're excited about that. And Haiku will also offer us a platform to develop teacher resources um, in our secondary schools next year. So we're also beginning that process this summer. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you have or concerns you have or things you want us to consider as we move forward. In addition to the top where you the Haiku platform, which came before the board a yes. month or two ago, but also gives us flexibility to, to, to borrow a trade to force us with, with some other LEAs that we can we can work together uh, with this part. Okay, so we're working some conversations with other LEAs on, on particular courses and other resources that we're sharing. So our goal is we started with courses that our high school principals, our high school administrators ask us to start with that they see the need for right up front. But our goal is to literally have all graduation requirements available virtually as well as beginning next year, um, a business management um, CTE credential. So if the student could even get that virtually. And that would be really great for kids who are involved in the arts or do athletes that maybe otherwise wouldn't have time in the day to get that credential. Yes, sir. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a, it's a good program. I'm very impressed with what you all are looking at doing. Uh, the only caution that I would would say that I would be concerned with is the uh, fact that basically a kid does all the work on the computer. No one ever really sees the kid or sees any of the work except what's turned in on the computer until they take the final exam. And then that final exam is worth 25% that have to come in and be monitored that they, that they actually have to take the test. The only flaw that I see is that if the kid had mama or boyfriend or, or aunt or somebody do the course for him, on the computer, uh, and they had, uh, say, a, a 90 average, the kid could come in and make a flat, just sign his name on the test and walk out with a 72 average and make the and pass the course uh, without ever actually having learned anything. I'd love to see us put some kind of a minimum score in for the final exam, whether it would be a 50 or 60 or something like that, that said, you know, we're not going to give you credit for turning in this online work that no one ever saw you do. Uh, unless you make do make some minimum score on the final exam that we see you actually sit here in that monitor situation and, and, and do. Okay. And you know, it wouldn't have to be a, a real high school, but enough that's going to eliminate just the, the uh, fraudulent somebody's doing the work for me and I just show up for the exam and plump the exam, and, but I still pass the course. Right. Absolutely. Good, good point. I will raise that with my criminal instruction advisory group and also the design team. Finalize our plans for August. Thank you. Um, I guess technology geek that I am. Um, I look at all the possible safeguards as well. Um, you can do a lot of video, um, homework, you know, and I, you're not going to be able to do a body double. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to have to come up with proof in some areas, and I think if they can implement that into their curriculum somehow, some way, there's a lot of different things you can do. But speak to, and I know Jerry's raised some great concerns about the possibilities, but also speak to the potential strengths of using this technology and how this is going to like go into homes and they're going to have all their information like on their iPhones or whatever, you know, it's going to be at their fingertips. Am I correct? Like they're yes. going to be able to have everything they any, need. Any smart device that can access the IP services. So it certainly opens up lots of possibilities. Um, you know, an online learning environment also, like you mentioned already, offers us some creative ways for kids to show us what they what they have learned and what they're able to do with that information. So I, I see this as really being an area that will not only benefit the students who are taking virtual courses, but it will benefit teachers, um, perhaps more traditional teachers who could use our haiku courses to think more innovatively about how they deliver our state curriculum. I have a struggle with tech with money. That's, that's something that's a burden there. You know, we, we talk about digital resources and creating our own digital resources, and that's one of the things that we're, we're working with, especially in the area of math, we to create our own digital resources. But, but creating this course, online course, also gives us the opportunity as a platform to have those digital resources that are there. So if Dr. Ware is teaching an online class and I'm teaching another section, then, then I can also, you know, have my students to have those online resources, have some availability there. It, it really, it, it's, it's got many advantages other than the, you know, what it seems, you know, at the virtual, virtual academy. I think Mr. Mr. Rook said earlier, it's got some increased value added things beyond what you see just up front. Thank you.
Yes. Uh, well, are we are we going to just get slam away from our basics? I had a, a child that just graduated from Rutherford County School. Matter of fact, uh, Thursday to tell me that she said that all we are studying now is technology and computers, and here I am out in the real world now, and I can't even write my own name. And I said, well, you must have did not follow nobody. She says, well, all we study is technology and stuff now. Are we going, are we going to leave the basics? Absolutely not. I, I see technology as a way to enhance, not to replace. And I, I, you, you probably caught that right up front. Uh, I was, we were quick to say that we think the most ideal way to deliver content is a great face-to-face -face teacher. So, but good point. I mean, we, we want technology to enhance what our students learn. We want them to be able to use technology to create and apply knowledge, not just learn uh, what's in classes. We want them to be able to use technology to apply it. So, I, I'm, we are on the same page with that, absolutely. And we have classes that teach technology. Those courses are designed to teach yes. technology. The courses we're working here are designed to teach the, the yes. curriculum and, and those basic curriculum. Yet we're going to use technology as the, the medium to, to get that uh, to get that instruction across uh, the, the, the courses and, and you know Dr. Ware heard me uh, bright enough or, or, or hard enough you know face to face this is an alternative this is an option that we're offering out there to make sure as we move to you know uh, the the goal of getting 100 percent of our students to graduate we're looking at we've got to increase those options and we've got to, uh, the opportunities for students to be successful. There. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to respond, and, and certainly those are serious concerns that, that, that Danny raises, and, and I see technology as a, as a tool, you know, not as a replacement as you know it is. And, and the bottom line uh, is that we want our students to be 21st century basic. We want them to be critical takers and problem solvers. You know, we want them to be team, team players. Uh, they have good all written communication. Those things are still critical. Do we have adaptability, flexibility, entrepreneurialism, curiosity, imagination? All those skill sets are still critical for us to have our kids 21st century ready. And so I don't think we're going to waver from that. And I hope this certainly will have all been done, not to take away from it. Absolutely. This is intended to enhance and provide some flexibility where it's needed. It is in no way, uh, we are not looking to replace or shortchange our kids at all. If anything, we, we're interested in making what we do better and innovative. I, I forgot exactly how the funding works, but on the North Carolina Virtual Public Schools, we either got a certain number of slots that we can use or we pay per student or something like that. Is, is this going to supplant some of the North Carolina Virtual Public Schools? To Is, is that part of the mission? There is or? a formula. I think there's some long-term and we'll see some cost savings there. Uh, we'll never completely get away from NCBPHS primarily because that is where we um, we use for our occupational courses uh, a lot of the time because of highly qualified issues. Um, but you're looking in that 400 courses that we've enrolled by the end of the summer, uh, only about 40 of those are OCS enrollments. So it's a formula. David may understand that a little bit better than me, but over time perhaps we'll see some save cost savings. We'll certainly see some savings in, uh, we currently use APEX for our recovery um, system, and that is very expensive. That's $150 a license. Haiku will allow us to do some of those recoveries using our own folks, and over time we'll also be able to dramatically reduce the number of licenses for recovery we currently purchase. That was going to be my next question. Can, can we use this for course recovery work? We are already yeah. using it. We piloted, when we were trying to decide which LMS, uh, we actually created an English one recovery course in Haiku and used it at Kings Mountain High School. And eight students who at the end of the third nine weeks were failing English one were able to go back and recover that content and through the failure. So we're very excited about that um, strategy. And I only expect that to increase as students learn about, as schools learn about haiku and teachers learn about haiku and literally develop their own recoveries to avoid the failure in the first place. And that's what we refer to that as quick recovery. Instead of remediating and recovering the full course, 
this allows us to hopefully avoid some of those failures in the first place. And my third question has to do with the logistics of the high school. When we had the virtual public school, we had a, a, a lab set up, and you had 12 kids taking 12 different courses, right. but they were all there for that one period. Is this going to work similar to that, or is all this to be done at home on, on your computer? It's up to the principal and the school what works for our particular students. Um, we have those virtual labs, which is great for us. So if it works for a student to be assigned um, a lab period, but I, we don't want to limit the, the flexibility. Sometimes this is to keep kids, to get kids on the community college campus or, some, or an internship. And this would allow them to do the work at home. Um, so that they're able to take advantage of those other experiences. You said that we have we have some teachers yes. in place and they're working on all this yes. and then we've got the draft handbook and you're anticipating students being able to start in August but this wasn't part of their pre-registration back in the earlier in the spring. How, I guess what I'm asking is how are the students going to know about this? How are the parents going to know so that they can encourage their... We have forwarded information about the first 14 courses to our schools to know that that's an option that works best for some of your students. So they're aware of what we're offering. Um, we often make those decisions with NCBPHS late anyway because we use it only when we really need to. So to be honest with you, the first phase of this will kind of be like that. We'll wait and see who needs that flexibility and then make it work for the student. Also, I noticed in here that the courses could be made available um, to homeschool children. Will there be a charge? For there will be a charge for that. You know, there's a lot there to learn about in Surrey County. Um, they offer homeschool um, families. Mm -hmm. The option to take one course for two hundred dollars or two, and they become they are on the ADM of the school. Um, so I see that as some potential for us um, in our community. We, uh, you know, it's tough to homeschool in high school. Yeah. Um, so I see that as an opportunity. We'll we hope to get some interest in that area. But yes, we would either receive compensation through ADM or they would be charged for courses. So two courses, if they let us take two courses and they yes. go on our ADM. Yes. Is that in the same year or the that would be the same at the same time as the same semester. If, if they take two courses, which would be half time uh, okay. student, then we get funding ADM. It wouldn't be like a transfer from that. No, no. They would they would back to the enroll with the next school. Okay. All right. Uh, it seems to me there would be some advantage in fact that it is new, it maybe isn't all out there yet as far as information. But, uh, I mean, I have a kid that really, I tried to help him with his device and he really, he could use the device, but he didn't know how to learn. And uh, I mean, uh, some of these kids are going to have to be face to face yes. or they aren't going to learn here. But they may see this as a easy way out, so I would assume there's going to be some guidance at least to start off with. Yes. Yes. Guidance and orientation, certainly for any homeschool interest, and then our principals and our guidance counselors know the students and certainly some of the criteria. You want to make sure that a student can handle the online work and that they have to be self-motivated, um, so all of that would be taken into consideration, absolutely. I, I say this, Dr. Hammer, as, as a situation where into it, we'll have an increased number, but I think as we start, obviously the majority of our students, as we said, will be face-to-face, -face. and then those principals and guidance counselors will say, well, this situation is, is, a, uh, is a unique situation. This, this tool will help here. This tool will help here. Uh, this, this, we, can, we can use this to, to help this child. We can use this in this situation. So I think as we get going on this, we'll see an increased use, but, but obviously, as we say, our, our, our first thing is face-to-face. Mr. Harris, we're good. We're going back to your point about first uh, virtual public school. I agree with Dr. Ware. I don't think we ever get to where we can totally get away from that. But I do think if we offer the course in our virtual, in our uh, we have a summit class, then that would be the first priority over you know uh, what kind of virtual public. So I think we become less and less dependent on the kind of virtual public school because we're 
offering that, we're controlling that. We know who the teacher is. We've got a, our, our principal has a, a lot more control over that at the building site. But but because of uh, certain courses, there may not be. Uh, you know, we may have to skip use of the virtual school. Well, at the beginning of the fall, if we're offering it in our virtual academy, we will not be enrolled in this. So that that would be. Um, our principals know that, and that's the plan. Or not be enrolled in one. If we are offering a course in our virtual academy, uh, we will not be using NCBPHS uh -oh. next year for that course. I do want to mention too, this is important, and this is different than NCBPHS. In our courses, all end of year state assessments will be required, and they'll actually take those exams on their home high school campus. So unlike the virtual academy, we don't, we don't test uh, NC final exams. Our teachers, our students, we will, we will do that. Which is important, I think, for a well, I think it's also one of the biggest complaints I got from different people taking home was I know they couldn't get absolute face to face. Yes. But phone to phone sometimes, or computer to computer was difficult sometimes. And I think we would have more control over our own teachers. Yeah, in case the ex teacher was not cutting the mustard, so to speak. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the principal gets after it. Well, and I'm excited that having experienced NCBPHS as a principal, seeing certain students really struggle, um, this would allow us to have a face to face option during the week if we need to help students be successful. So it's very exciting. Very exciting. Any other questions about virtual We're also starting leadership development program next fall, beginning in September, and we've identified eight critical leadership areas um, that school administrators need to be well versed and knowledgeable about to be successful. Uh, this program would be um, open to um, school level administrators and perhaps even uh, some of our many, many teachers who already hold the administrative credential, who are interested and maybe not sure they really want to be a school level administrator, this would give them an opportunity to learn more about what that job is about. Um, and here are the eight, and this is certainly still in the planning stage. Um, we just wanted to share it with you, but we've identified our eight areas, and we'll use our own faculty in Cleveland County to be the teachers for these sessions. So we're really looking forward to that. We still need to determine the format, how much time those sessions will be. Uh, but we're really excited about this and believe we need this to grow our own in Cleveland County. So I welcome any thoughts or questions you have. Yes, sir. Yeah, I do. And I, let me applaud you for that. I am a strong proponent of leadership development and professional development. And as I was working, you know, at the, you know, at the preliminary design of it, a uh, great, important, crucial areas for development. But I want to suggest for you to consider another important component of that, that, of that uh, uh, offering. And that is uh, because of uh, our changing demographics and, and very diverse community, that leadership should also encompass cultural competence. You know, whether it's cultural diversity, cultural relevance, but some form of cultural competence so that leaders have a good grasp of the changing dynamics and changing demographics of, uh, of the community. Absolutely. And I think that would help strengthen, you know, those leadership skills. Okay. Ms. Ripper, as we get into these things, uh, Jennifer and I have had some conversations. We've had lots of conversations jumping around. We've kind of uh, talked about different things. And so we're still uh, early in the planning yes. stages of as we get into things, we may say, okay, two of these we want to combine. But, you know, it's just we want you guys to know, okay, we're, we're out there working on, you know, on some of these things. And if we do it for, uh, we may do it a semester and realize, okay, we, you know, check, make some, make some additions. But we'll, and, and we'll I get some support that because I think that's part of what we need to have in order for us to move to becoming the top school system, uh, becoming a premier institution, those kinds of development skills. Real quick. I think it's very impressive what you're doing. I'm very much so applaud you. A um, couple things here, um, and I'll ask all my questions on the front end. 
Um, how many people are we looking to do in the first group, per se? I'd say 24 to 30 at a time. Okay. Maybe you're on a program, one topic of month is what we're talking about. Okay. And it's not open to the public. This is just for This is for our folks. This is for our folks. Very good. School level administrators and your teacher leaders who have the credential on that. And, and what about, I know Mr. you're early in the process and you had to nail these down, but even the presentation of these, one of the things about, uh, about principal is they must be that, that face, um, that um, the PR person. I see you have some things that could probably encompass that element, but, but maybe, you know, it, even interview, you know, that kind of thing, you know, if they're going to go to the next level, they need to know how to present themselves and what people may or may not be looking for. But I think this is very impressive and it will be good for our staff. Well, should we not get input from our teachers and stuff when we are selecting these principals and stuff uh, of how they feel? As far as for, for this program? What do you think? Well, you know, and we, part of what we'll do, and some of this has got, we've got some input for some of our principals about you know, what what do you what do you think would be good to learn? And as we get started, we will continue to input what was valuable, what do you need, what what things would be important to get uh, to learn more about. So we're we're always in the uh, in the position to get input as we as we go through things. Uh, and that's why that's one of the reasons why we want to bring it to the board to get some as we got tonight some great inputs and some things as we, we start to get this program on the ground. And Mr. Blackman, thank you for that. I will say that. You'll find these topics embedded in our teacher working conditions, which is a great place to go to really look at the things that matter to teachers and the things we look at over time. So I think you would find any of these in that survey. They may use a different uh, term for it, but I do think they're, they're pretty basic categories of things that we know make a difference um, in our schools in supporting our teachers and our students. Um, one last thing we're very excited about, our teacher symposium, Growing Teacher Talent to Harvest Student Learning. Uh, we now have 44 75-minute sessions offered in that one-day conference, um, all but two taught by our own Cleveland County Schools faculty. We're very excited about that. We have lots of talented folks that will be teachers that day to their peers. Um, two of those 44 are actually um, financial literacy sessions that are provided free of charge from two banks. Um, and those are materials we just want to make sure our teachers are aware of or available to them, those who teach that curriculum. And then we also have um, only four outside folks coming in, and they're actually doing half-day sessions. You have the entire conference. Another piece I'm very excited about um, we have 33 poster sessions, and those are an opportunity for teachers to share something at the classroom level that's working with their students. And they'll actually be scheduled for one 75-minute session to share that if folks want to actually have a conversation. So we're very, very excited um, and proud of our folks. And we have just a nice diversity of topics. We did want to make sure these topics were related, um, really have an impact on Last and, uh, we just when, when, when is August 5th? August 5th. Oh. I saw it in June 5th yeah. on the thing you got June 5th. I saw it in June 5th. Uh, okay. Scroll so down and yeah. share it. Uh, yeah. Keep scrolling uh, back up uh, in the middle of the right usual day. That's the most current update of that document. Uh, <laughs> it's not the day okay. all right. no, so you know, the event is August 5th. But, but yeah, it is August 5th. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you guys are definitely invited to August 5th yes. to come. Absolutely. And, and you can sit in the session um, or you can walk around and see what the uh, session is going to say. Y'all would take a chance to invite me to come? Sorry? Y'all would take a chance to invite me to come? We'll put you in class get you to learn something. <laughs> And that's just the brand. Uh, that's your, your oh, right. this, this facility, and we're also using the middle school classrooms at TPA. The posters, will, the poster sessions, will all be set up in the TPA atrium. And our local businesses are aware and are. Um,
planning to perhaps even have special menus that day. We're allowing them for an hour and a half so they can walk downtown and eat in our local restaurants. So we're excited about that as well. Okay. I think that's the way that Thank you. This has been a project of the entire instructional team, and uh, we feel like it represents all areas of our school system, so we're very proud of it. Any, any other questions? Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you both. We're, we're a little bit behind. Let's just take a 10 minute break. <laughs> <laughs>